Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we've got uh, my comrade in arms. Uh, I'm not sure which way he's going to be <laughs> sitting on the view, but uh, Jack Toledano, he's this way. There we go. Right. That always, that always works, right? You can't go wrong with that. Yes. So Jack Toledano is joining us here. We're going to talk about uh, the short but pretty high-profile catalog of the Eagles. Kind of band, I hard to categorize, right? It's a, are they, they're not really a rock band. They're not really a country band. They're kind of a country rock band. They're soft rock, they're yeah. hard rock. They got elements of Southern rock, but they're not from the South. So right. it's just the Eagles, right? It's like, well, as Don Henley described them, and I don't know if anybody has watched their, they have a movie, uh, The History of the Eagles or a oh, documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend. It's very it. entertaining. Even if you don't it like is, the band, it's really, yeah. it's really entertaining. It is one of the best music documentaries I've ever seen. It's great. It's chock full of inter information. It's funny at times. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, very poignant commentary by you know Don Henley, Glenn Frey. Uh, even Don Felder had some good comments, you know, in there. Which, by the way, if you're interested in this band at all, as a kind of a companion to that film, the documentary, you got to read Don Felder's book. I that did, is, yeah. Uh, it's dynamite. For anybody yeah. out there who hasn't read it, that's one of the better rock biographies out there. Oh, it's a damn no good. question. Yeah. But, uh, basically, what did Don Henley say uh, while they were on the subject? And we'll talk about uh, their first producer, Glenn Johns. Uh, Don Henley said that they wanted to be like a hybrid of like, country country and you know normal well they didn't call it classic rock but more of like a an album oriented rock they, right. they wanted to be a hybrid of those two and, which um, they were i mean basically yeah. they did pop they did, did did some hard rock tunes they did some like you said some country type stuff and a little bit of bluegrass early on a little bit of everything so oh yeah cool yeah cool stuff so uh, and and a band that has that spawned like uh, a lot of superstar players. I mean, you know, almost everybody in this band became like larger than life. You know, Glenn Fry, Don Felder, uh, Don Henley, Joe Walsh. When you know, coming from the James Gang, you know, right. the, the, all these guys just bigger than life. You know, Timothy B. Schmidt too played in Poco. You know, right. you Randy Meisner and the whole the whole crew. I mean, just a lot of really notable players and personalities in this band. So, uh, you know, egos running wild. I think that's the reason why they didn't last that long. Because right. uh, how, how can you contain all that, right? Uh, right. But, you know, they've, they've been back together in various formats in recent years. We've had some, you know, of course, Glenn Fry's no longer with us, but they're still continuing on. They're feuding with Felder. So Felder hasn't been in the in the fold in quite a while. So anyway, that's the story for another day. Um, cool. You can go hear the whole thing on that uh, documentary that Jack was talking yes. about. So uh, we got seven albums here, seven studio releases. And uh, Jack's going to kick us off with his number seven. Okay. So um, this one doesn't really count. Oh, <clears throat> There was actually a little spider on my uh, on my laptop screen. He wants to join the show. Hey, come on in. Yeah. More, the more the merrier. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, this one doesn't doesn't really uh, warrant a rank. It's uh, I would consider this a not applicable. But uh, there's the album Hell Freezes Over with a couple songs. Get over it and Love Will Keep Us Alive. Good songs. Thought I would just throw that out there as kind of an honorable mention. But uh, my number seven. Uh, I think this is a no-brainer. It's the uh, their double album, Long Road Out of Eden. Uh, it's the album that they released to Walmart directly. Uh, it was an ambitious project. Uh, I like the fact that they gave us, uh, you know, two CDs worth of music at a reasonable price. Uh, in fact, uh, Kiss liked it too because they did the same thing. They yep. said, wow, maybe we'll... Uh, take a little profit out of this. So they really- And ACDC it. did it also, and Journey yeah. did it also, yep. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, in 2007, you don't really have the radio that you can release these songs to any longer. So these so a lot of these songs didn't really speak to me. I mean, my favorite song on the album is How Long, the Glenn Fry song that I, uh, who, is the, who is the person that wrote it? Uh, Jack Temchin, I believe, possibly. Yeah. I'll tell you in a second. Hold on. Let's see here. It is J.D. Souther. Oh, J.D. Souther. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. and who they've worked with a ton in their career. Right. So, I mean, there are a few good songs, Guilty of the Crime, uh, the 11-minute uh, Long Road Out of Eden, I thought was pretty cool. 
uh, No More Cloudy Days by Glenn Fry. Um, Cringeworthy, you have I Don't Want to Hear Anymore by Timothy B. Schmidt. You're going to find that I'm not a huge Timothy B. Schmidt fan because while I like his vocals, uh, I just don't think he challenges himself. It's all ballads with him. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what he's all about, right? Yeah. Uh, last Good Time in Town, it's not the Joe Walsh I know. So that's my commentary on Long Road Out of Eden. Well, so, no surprise, my number seven is also Long Road Out of Eden. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think this is pretty much of a stinker. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I've, I bought this when it came out because I've, I've been an Eagles fan since I'm like 11 years old. So I was like, right. and it's been so long. And then I, you put this on and it's just like a, you know, a double album in 2007. Right. Uh, when there's, I don't know, for me, there's nothing, there's nothing to sink my teeth into on here. Right. You're right. There's a, there's a couple of tracks that are pretty good, but yeah. some of the songs are too long. It, you know, it's one, I don't mind long songs, but man, right. hold my attention. And I just don't, even like the, the stuff that, that they want, that they wanted to be like, you know, hit material, like pop songs, they're not memorable. No. And not I've, at all. I've tried like so many times to yeah. like keep giving, I keep this giving another chance, another chance. And I'm like, by the time I'm like halfway through this, I'm like bored out of my mind. And it's just yeah. to me, this just seems like a band that churned out a record just to churn out a record. And you know what? You can't do that in the 2000s. What I find very interesting. So uh, Pete and I were talking before Pete hit the record <laughs> button. Uh, we, uh, and you notice we're wearing the same shirt. Yeah. It's, it was not planned. I, saw the Eagles on that, on that history of the Eagles tour in 2013 at uh, Bethel Woods, uh, the, uh, the former site of Woodstock. And uh, Pete, I, I mean, major kudos for, uh, for getting us those good lawn seats at that great price. Just I know, right? The Eagles. Yeah. I know people who spent like over, well over a hundred to see them at Madison Square Garden. People uh, well, have, well over a hundred. Yeah. yeah. For, sh for shitty seats. Yes. Yeah. But uh, the thing I found very interesting, I don't think they even had a single song off of Long Road Out of Eagle in this in their set list. I, you know what? I don't recall it, to no, be honest with you. Do I don't recall them playing anything on this. Yeah. And why would you? Yeah. <laughs> it's just not very good. It's like, right. I want to like it. It's a good sounding album, you know? It's production's great. But, and you're right. Like, like, Joe Walsh is, like, non-existent on this. Well, I mean, what they did was they gave Joe Walsh two songs. They gave Timothy Schmidt two songs. Yeah, they're not any good. It's like, oh, God, I don't know. I just, I, for me, yeah. there's, there's the Eagles albums, and then there's this. I well, mean, the, the gap between this and my next one is enormous. Well, more on the subject of Joe Walsh as we move up the list. But Okay. So my number six, and uh, if you watch that documentary, they call this one the long one, not the long run, the long one. And, you know, I could kind of see why. I mean, again, it's got some great songs in it. The title track, uh, Heartache Tonight. Uh, Joe Walsh, I think that's Joe Walsh's best song that he put on an Eagles album in the city. So, uh the Greeks don't want no freaks. I mean, <laughs> what when you say you like that song, that that pretty much poo poos the rest of the album. Uh, you know, you could tell that they they basically they even said that they went to the studio without really having a song written. So you you, you could kind of tell it was kind of forced. Yeah, I. That album was kind of special for me. That's why it, that's going to rank a little higher for me, but we'll get okay. to that. So I, I, I was joking with Jack before we went on the air. That I think that my ranking is going to piss off some people and it's, but it's, you know, it's, it's how I feel about these albums. Right. So my number six is going to be an album that I think a lot of people really love a lot. And I don't dislike it by any means. Uh, Desperado from uh, 1973, their big concept album. And again, good album. I think the reason why I don't like this album as much as some of the other ones is this is this is really more of their country rock album. And right. again, they kind of planned it that way because it goes with the whole story and all that kind of stuff. And there's some great songs on here. You know, the title track is absolutely legendary. Tequila right. Sunrise, great. I love Duel and Dalton. Uh, a lot of the rest of it though, I don't really, I don't love that much. Uh, I think that's, yeah. like I said, it's, a, it's the album is a little bit too country for me. And, um, but still good. I just don't think it 
approaches the other ones, in my opinion. I know there's going to be a lot of people like, oh, Desperado is their gem and their cat. And that's cool if you think right. that. Um, I, I just don't. So, But I, I do like it. I do like it. Well, it's interesting that you say that. It's good that you have two people here analyzing it, you know, just to, to give a little different perspective. Because uh, actually, I think my number five is going to piss off a few people, too. It's, I mean, it's a great album and it, it, it's it got some great, so well, I shouldn't say great album. It's got some great songs, but then it does have some stinkers. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was their second number one song ever. Uh, I'm talking about one of these nights. Mm. I mean, unfortunately, the album, I don't think is that cohesive. You got some really great songs. One of these nights, uh, one of their deep tracks, Too Many Hands, which I like. That's a collaboration of uh, Meisner and Fry. Uh, no, no, Meisner and Felder. Uh, Take It to the Limit, a great song. I, I love that song. I'm, yeah, great I'm vocal on that, yeah. Very happy when somebody other than Don or Glenn finally had a hit song on the radio. <laughs> uh, I Wish You Peace. Uh, I agree with Don Henley that it's smarmy cocktail music. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Lion Eyes, I've never been a huge fan of. I think the song is just a little too long and a little boring for me. But I hear you. That's my commentary on one of these nights. All right. My number five, 1972's debut. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's one of those albums, I think, that's got like a handful of tracks that are really, really good. And I think this album is like... Again, you can say that about a lot of debuts, about a band trying to figure out exactly what they want to be. So here you got a little bit of the country mixed with it. There's some, some pretty rocking stuff on this album. Yeah. Uh, and some great tunes. You know, you got Take It Easy, which is that kind of breezy pop tune, which everybody loves. It's one of their most legendary tracks. Uh, mm -hmm. Witchy Woman is yeah. killer. All right. It's yeah. always been one of my favorites. Uh, what else you got here? Chug. I mean, Chug is like unlike anything yeah, else they've ever done. That's yeah. like, like a hard rock tune, right? Yes. I, I have to be honest, I was very surprised that that made the album, because I thought part of the problem where they, that they had with Glenn, jo Glenn Johns is that he just wanted to play their country rock stuff. He didn't, right, and they had other stuff that they wanted to, he to did do. Not, well. He did not want them to try to be like The Who or Led Zeppelin or, you know. Yeah, well, that's, the, that's the there's no need songs. to be, yeah. He didn't think they were capable of that. So, that, so when I heard Chug all night, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> interesting chug is good take the devil another pretty you know rousing rocker uh, then you got you know peaceful easy feeling uh yeah there's a couple other tunes on here that don't really work for me too well but um but i still think uh, as a debut it's pretty damn solid uh i can imagine if you go back to you know 1972 and you hear this and you don't know anything you know nobody knew anything about this band at the time you're probably like okay this is like a weird mix of style what is what is this band all about and they really wouldn't start to Kind of really figure it out till the next couple albums i think right but uh, it's funny uh we can continue talking about it because it's my number four. Oh, there you go <laughs> but uh you, two songs you didn't mention uh early bird i love the banjo that uh, burning leaden plays in that and i do like the the sound of the banjo when it's played right and, yeah they didn't use it much in this band but they on those first couple albums you would hear it every now and then and then all of a sudden bloop, that's it as soon as he was gone from the band that was it but he was very good at it I, oh, I, he was a very good player yeah, he's yes, a very good player. Yes. Uh, another song that I really, and this, see, I, I was talking about Timothy B. Schmidt earlier, where I didn't think he, he, he didn't challenge himself. I, I would, just once, I may, I may have liked to hear a hard rocker from him. Uh, he probably could sing it, because let me tell you something, that yeah. guy arguably had the best voice in the band after he yeah. joined. But, Great uh, singer. Well, the last song on the album, I think, is the song Trying. It's mm -hmm. a Randy Meisner tune. Yeah. To me, that really shows his versatility. Yeah. And that's why I thought he was a great vocalist and was sad when he left after uh, Hotel California. Yeah, he was such a big part of the early the early yeah. career there. And it's like, you know, it's... And again, I think that had a lot to do with the egos of the other guys, you know, became their band. And Randy kind of felt like, you know... Right, yeah. It's like, what am I doing here, right? Nothing, they don't want to use any of my songs. I'm singing less. It's like, uh, you know, and... They bring yeah. put in a guy, you know, Timothy B. Schmidt, who they knew very well because they were very friendly with Poco. He was in Poco. And he yeah. kind of like, all right, you're the bass player. We'll let you sing a song or two on the album. And that's or maybe a song. Um, mm -hmm. And he was okay with that because, you know, he was, the Eagles were big business at that point in time. Well, so yeah, I mean, he was getting a nice paycheck to just kind of play bass and sing a song. Right? Poco to, to the Eagles. I mean, that was a hell of a jump. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. 
So my number four uh, is The Long Run from 1979. And I mean, I have like warm memories of this album because I remember when it came out. I remember when I heard it was coming out and I was, I was a big fan. I was into, you know, one of these nights and all the early albums. And I remember telling my dad who worked in New York City at the time, I said, dad, here's, here's uh, my allowance money, you know, go and here's $8 or whatever it was when you go because he worked uh, um, down by the, uh, by city hall and right across the street, was JNR Music World. So whenever wow. I wanted an album, I would tell, I would give dad money and say, can you go pick up X album that just came out on your lunch hour or something like that. So he, I remember him coming home with the long run wrapped up in, you know, the plastic and listening to that and like thinking, and I, I listened to this album a ton, you know, revisiting it all these years later. Yeah, like you mentioned, there are a couple stinkers on here, but you know, right. the title track is great. I Can't Tell You Why is a great battle. We talk about Timothy B. Schmidt. That's a fantastic song. Yeah. In the City is great. The Disco Strangler, you know, King of Hollywood. Heartache Tonight is a good party tune, I guess. Uh, you know, Those Shoes is great, yeah. I right. think. Wow. Oh yeah, exactly. Wait you know, The Sad Cafe. So yeah. I don't know, I, I have good memories of this album, but I know that behind the scenes, the band was a absolute disaster here yeah and you can kind of tell that this is an album made up of a bunch of guys who are probably not talking probably not hanging out in the studio right. uh, it just sounds like i mean everybody's doing their own songs on here so we got you know uh, three songs from glenn three songs from from uh, don you know two well, songs from joe it's just that's the way it is i didn't mention this earlier but uh for me the long run it it just felt too much like a don henley, henley solo album because by that time it was mostly his vocals you know, you had one song each from Glenn, uh, Joe Walsh, and uh, Tim Schmidt, and the rest was main, mainly Don Henley. Yeah, it just it I just was sounds... used to an earlier sound from the Eagles where there was more of a mixture of the lead vocals. And they're writing together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I hear you. All right. Number three, what do you got? So, number three, yeah. Uh, to me, this is another, feels like another Don Henley solo album, Hotel California. <laughs> now it's a, again it's a great album i mean it's got uh some of the best songs i've ever heard on the radio uh hotel california uh started out as like a you know a, just a, a a little guitar ditty from uh don felder um then you know then you have a new kid new kid in town great song uh life in the fast lane uh doesn't get any better than that lick that was basically a song built around uh, uh, Joe Walsh practicing on his guitar to, yep. as a warm up. Yep. Uh, Waste of Time, nice ballad. Victim of Change, oh, Victim of Changes. There. Oh, <laughs> it's got Judas God. Priest on the brain. <laughs> yeah. Victim of Love. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, I know you haven't brought it up yet, so I'll let you, I don't want to give too much of the album away, but. Uh, one disappointment for me was, uh, you know, if you're going to include a Joe Walsh song on that album, why did it have to be a ballad? Yeah. Uh, I, pretty, pretty Maids All in a Row is not... Um, I, I mean, here, here I'm, I'm used to songs like Rocky Mountain Way and uh, Funk 49 and uh, oh, uh, Walk Away. I mean, great material from Joe Walsh. Why did they, you know, why did they have to do that? Yeah, that's one of my least favorite songs on the album, actually. And the fact that, you know, it feels like a Don Henley solo album. Of course, I'm used to more songs with Glenn and only one. Yeah, only one. And only one Randy Meisner here, too, which the yeah. actually very good Try and Love Again song, right. which, you know, could have been a huge hit had they wanted to do that. But obviously, you know, it's, yeah. it's the, you know, who's kind of running this band right about yeah. this time. Right. So that's also my number three. Uh, and again, I know there's going to be a lot of people unhappy about that because most people seem to think that this automatically should be the number one ranked Eagles album. And not for me, it isn't. I mean, it's a great album. Don't get me wrong. I listened to this a ton back in the day and it's got legendary songs on it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, The Last Resort, which you didn't bring up, is a fantastic song. Right. Um, but it's like, you know, I think for me also, a lot of this album is really played out because I listened to this yeah. like, to death right. back in the day. And I think that, you know, sometimes you have to take into consideration while, you know, all right, 30 or 40 years ago, I might have said this was my favorite Eagles album. But, you know, since like God, the mid late 80s, yeah. I don't listen to this hardly at all anymore. And I find yeah. that my top two, I, when I reach for Eagles albums, that's what I reach for. Um, so it's, you know, sometimes. 
to me, it's like saying that uh, Aqualung by Jethro Tull is my favorite album. It's too cliche. I mean, yeah. saying that Hotel California is your, your number one. Right. Well, but you bring up a good similarity. It's just just because it's it's their biggest selling one. Right. And actually, actually, I don't even know because the long run sold a shitload too. So I don't know which one sold more. But I think most people consider this their like magnum opus, and I get right. it. Uh, it doesn't mean it has to be my favorite though, right? You know, I, I, I appreciate and we'll talk about its greatness all the time, just like Aqualung. But just like Jethro Tull, Aqualung is not my favorite Jethro Tull album. Hmm. It's probably not even my number three. It's probably, it's yeah. not even in my top three. So it's, right. you know, anyway. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> On number, to number two. Number two, you already mentioned this. It's uh, Desperado. Um, so I'll tell you what I like about this album. I love the... And this is what really attracted me to the Eagles. This book. So I first really got into the Eagles when my brother bought me uh, the best of the Eagles. You know, I think everybody owned at some yeah. point in their lives, right? It's and like the biggest selling album of all time. I just love, and basically I fell in love with the same thing Glenn Johns did, the, the mixture of the great vocals, whether, you know, doing a lead vocal or, you know, the harmony. Uh, Duel and Dalton, I just love Don will sing a verse, then Glenn will sing a verse. And uh, I love the banjo of 21 and uh, the song Bitter Creek. I think it's uh, Bernie Ledden's best song with the Eagles. I, I, I really like that tune. And then I also, uh, another real uh, hidden gem is Outlaw Man. I love that song. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. You know, it's interesting you bring up the uh, the fact that they had like all these great singers in the band. And if you go back to that era and look at two of the big bands at the time, which was them and Fleetwood Mac, what do they both have in common? Great vocalists. The three singers, right? Or yes. more, right? And yeah. every album is filled with all this variety, all this different flavored songwriting and all these different lead and backing vocals that i mean that was like a lot of bands who like really made it big at the time you know it, it you either have to have one really great lead singer or multiple really strong singers that work together and make magic so i think yeah. that uh, they're a perfect example of that. you know the other band i was thinking of was boston but boston was all about the one guy who was just like absolutely yeah. amazing and right. you know you didn't need anybody else so but the look at all the bands that maybe didn't really make it big in that era a lot of them had decent songs but man the vocals were just kind of like not quite not memorable yeah you know so what's interesting is that you and i basically kind of flip-flopped desperado and one of these nights uh into oh, so it, it, okay. we both kind of i think we both kind of feel the same about the other and right. for me um there are just, there's some songs on here. Again, I think we talked about this on the Primal Fear show. There are some songs on this album that I love so much that even though they might have stronger albums top to bottom, this winds up finishing higher because I think the title track is, it's my favorite Eagle song of all time. I love it. Uh, Too Many Hands. I mean, such a great yeah. rocking song. Yes. Uh, Journey of the Sorcerer is a fantastic track that's like unlike anything else they've ever done. You right. know, you got Lion Eyes, which is a great pop tune. I never need to hear it again. Yeah, take right. It to the Limit, another great pop tune. Uh, you know, After the Thrill is Gone, I actually like After the Thrill is Gone better than those two songs I just mentioned. Right. Uh, Visions is a cool song. Hollywood Waltz, pretty good. I Wish You Peace is okay. Um, but I just think there's a couple tracks on here that I just absolutely love. And then there's the, you know, the great pop tunes. And so I don't know, I just, and I absolutely love this album cover. I mean, that to me is like one of the gems of the seventies. That is such right. a great album cover. I wish I had a t-shirt of this to be honest, but anyway, so I think, I think we know what both of our number one's going to be yeah. surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. So do we want to say it at the same time? Let's say it at the same time. So number one for both of us is... On the border. On yes. the border. So I think uh, we have uh, going to both have some very good insight to this album. Uh, uh, I mean, here, for, the first song I ever heard over this album, Already Gone, because I had it on the, uh, the greatest hit. I mean, that's just great that they didn't write it, but that is just a killer, killer song. Yep. Uh, what else? Uh, Midnight Flyer. Midnight uh, Flyer is great. You know, it's a uh, country rock at its best. Again, with the banjo. Uh, what else? Uh, the title track is amazing. Oh, I was going to save that for last, but since you you broke the ice, well, you know. This, this for me, this is like a Don Felder album. This is his statement right here. I well, mean, I know he's I done great stuff on the other. only on two songs on, uh, on uh, 
on the border. I thought, uh, I don't know, but man, he makes such an impact on him. It's like, it's almost like, you know. Well, my understanding is they brought him in for Good Day in Hell because of his ability to play the slide guitar. Right, and yeah. So he's he on that. He's on Already Gone. Yeah. But that slide guitar in Good Day in Hell is amazing. Really? Yeah, I guess, you're, I guess you're right. He's only on those two tracks. But, you know, every time I listen to uh yeah, that's it. Right. Interesting. Uh, but it's this, I always kind of saw this. And, yeah. I mean, this is like their rockingest album. Yes, I think, and uh, he's such a presence on those two tracks. So every time I think of this album, I think of Don Felder. That's why I always call this a Don Felder album. But you know, yeah. James Dean is a great song. Yes, amazing. Okay. All fifty five is yeah. awesome. Yes, uh, you know, the best of my love for my money might be one of their best yeah. slow ballads. I know it's kind of wishy washy, yeah. but I can... it's yeah. got a great it's hook. Too syrupy for me, but uh, I mean. I... Put, putting that song aside, the rest of the album I think is killer. Yeah. And getting back to the to the title track on the border, I absolutely I I dare say that's that would probably be my number one Eagles song. Really? I uh, I, I mean uh, on a side note, people don't know this about me from having watched the other videos that I participated in. Uh, I love metal first, but I have a I've always had a soft side for like the. Uh, 60s to like late 70s r&b you know when i'm in the mood but this song is like an r&b song and you know i just i i love again i love the blend of voices and i love her bernie comes in he's like you in some trouble boy we know <laughs> where you've been <laughs> I think that song for me reminds me of um, it's almost like the Eagles doing their take on like the band Rare Earth or Grand Funk Railroad. It's got that because oh, and again, both of those bands have a lot of R and B and soul in there, and they're like kind of hard rock and music. So I think for me, on the border, kind of also fits into that box a little bit. I think it's a it's a really fun track. Right. So, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm, right now, I've got I've got the uh, the guitar riff of Good Day in Hell in my head, and I'm like, oh, this is so yeah. good. Right. So good. Well, I was actually singing on the border to myself before we uh, signed on. Because <laughs> I knew I was I was gonna give that nothing but the best accolades. But uh yeah. one song that we didn't mention is uh my man, uh the Bernie Ledden tune on the album. I oh yeah, yeah. Nice tribute to Graham Parsons. Yeah, yeah, it's got some nice uh pedal steel on it, so it's got that very kind of flying burrito brothers uh, flavor to it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, you know, I for me. Honestly, with the exception of Long Road Out of Eden, I mean, the rest of the catalog for me is really good. Right. And, you know, I'll, I'll, some of these albums are not separated by much. Right. And I like, you know, I like a lot of them. Uh, Long Road Out of Eden for me is something I never reach for. But all of these early albums, the, the main ones, they're all pretty I mean, special in their own right, you know. Even though some of, some of the certain albums I ranked a little lower, I mean, they all have their, uh, their strong points. Yep, they do. Long Road Out of Eden, not as much so, but even the long run, I, you know, it's got its strong points. Yep, yep, I hear you. So, everybody watching, you know the drill. Uh, down in the comments below, rank these albums as you see them. Rank them as you like them. There's no right or wrong answer here. I think we can all agree. Uh, I know there's going to be there's going to be a lot of fans of Long Road Out of Eden who are going to be like, oh, Pete and Jack don't know what they're talking about. That's such a great double album. It's one of the best double albums of the 2000s. Hey, if you think opinions, that, awesome. People, opinions, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it's, I, I personally, as someone who grew up with this band, uh, I think Long Road Out of Eden is, there's just really not a lot redeemable yeah. about it. Um, for me, if you like it, awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think that's cool because I, we all hear these albums differently and that's the way it should be. Uh, I mean, but for me, man, people, those first six, all pretty special. I was going to say, if you want to rank the Walmart albums, I think Kiss and ACDC did better Walmart albums. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And quite frankly, I, I think the Journey album is better than all of them, to be honest. <laughs> I listen to that more. But, you know, I know you hate Journey, so it's like, yeah. you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, visit us on the web at www.seaoftranquility.org. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, of course. Come back here to YouTube. All the damn time. There you go. I was like hoping Jack was paying attention there. So yes. Anyway, uh, Jack's coming back in a couple of weeks. We are. Uh, what are we working on next, Jack? Is that? Uh, well, we we have a top ten traffic. 
which that's um, right. So that's coming next from Jack and I. So uh, I a lot of you have asked for a follow up to the traffic ranking the album show. So we're going to do a top 10 songs right. show a traffic. Uh, Jack and I are also going to rank the Ice Earth catalog coming up soon. And Jack oh. is also going to join me on a deep cut dive show over the next couple of weeks, too. I'm not going to spill the beans on that one just oh. yet because I know uh, people are going to be waiting, salivating for that one. So right. uh, we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep that hidden for right now. Yes. So, um, so for Jack Toledano, I am Pete Pardo. This is on the web. I think I already said that, so we don't need to do it again. So, Jack, take us out here, and we'll see everybody uh, later on. All right. Uh, what What do I say? All the damn time, or yeah? Well, we already said that. Okay. Anyway, okay. Uh, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. Thanks, thanks for, uh... for watching, everybody. For talking to you. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye bye.